things Halloween, this is Hotformer and welcome back to my unveiling, if you will, although you've probably seen it by now, of the Party City Halloween lineup for 2022. Or also, I guess, synonyms, if you will, the Halloween City lineup for 2022. Which, interestingly enough, is more anticipated, it seems, by the masses of Halloween fans out there than Spirit Halloween's lineup. And don't worry, I will talk about Spirit Halloween soon. But, bear with me as we talk about, I think, the more exciting lineup, Party Cities. Party City has had a really interesting history with their Halloween stuff. A lot of their stuff used to be made by Morbid and companies from Ruby's. Now they're shifting to a, a different selection, some made by SVI and some other creators out there. Techie comes to mind as well. And I'm actually really digging this year's lineup. I think it might be better than last year's and probably and practically every other year from Party City, which is exciting. Now, I do have uh, the list of props on my phone to talk about, but there's one that's in my head and I have to get it out of the way first. My most anticipated animatronic for the 2022 Halloween season. If you know me, no surprise, the creep from Creep Show. I love it. I There's nothing for me to say. I could go on and talk about how much I love Creep Show and how much I've been waiting for a creep, but the picture really paints a thousand words. It's a fantastic looking animatronic, even if you don't know the character. Then on top of that, he's holding the Creep Show comic book issue in his hand. Looks like he has light up eyes and probably a moving mouth. I'm assuming he's going to laugh and play the little intro theme from the Shudder Creepshow series, a series I've been watching for quite some time now, and I actually have a review on the way. But I am super stoked for this. I love Creepshow. I have a bunch of Creepshow stuff in my room. Going to make an awesome display piece, a great centerpiece for Halloween. And this is the first licensed animatronic from Creepshow, so I hope if it's successful, we'll see more products from Creepshow like Fluffy, like Dead Nate, like, well, there's a lot from the show if you've seen the Shutter series. But it's very exciting that we finally have a creep. I could make this whole video about the creep. We're going to move on, but the creep is my favorite thing on the list. But now let me pull up the other things because they're not licensed, but they're just as promising for Halloween fans. And I'm going to start with the stuff that's not as interesting, I guess. And then we'll move in to the really fun stuff. <laughs> so, where to start? Well, we'll start at the least interesting thing just by default, and that is a new step pad. Although I do think it's cool. I never use step pads. I don't really get the purpose of having them at your home. I think they're only a store thing, but they are selling a new one. And I guess this one's far less generic than the typical run-of-the-mill ones with foot imprints. So all I'm going to talk about with a step pad, it's a step pad, it is what it is, let's move on. There are, I thought there were two, I think there's only one, I'm, I'm sure there will be some other assorted ones, but there's a new ground fogger, a clown one, and these are more or less always the same, just variations of the same thing. I don't think this one looks bad, and I think if you're using it in the correct way, it might be cool. I don't entirely understand why a clown is on the ground fogging from its mouth. It'd make more sense if it was a zombie or some kind of corpse, but nevertheless, if you're a clown fan, this one might be for you. Uh, we also are getting a few, I guess, tabletop kind of smaller items. The first is this new tombstone. Not a whole lot to say about it. It's got some candles down towards the base and a spooky looking head. If you're in the market for cemetery themed stuff, I think this is a fine option. There are better and worse tombstones out there. A lot of the times with tombstones, I feel it's really down to personal preference. I don't know if I would gravitate to this one, but have at it, have at it. 
We also are getting, this is a weird one. It's a spider baby, not the spider baby, a spider baby. It's a spider with, a, it looks like a baby doll, like porcelain head on the top of it. We haven't seen videos, I should say, and keep in mind for all of this stuff, so opinions are subject to change, but I don't really think I want this one. There's not really a need for me to get it. There are some people, I'm sure, that are going to like the ingenuity here, and I appreciate the originality, but for me, the tabletop ones really have to stick out or be worthwhile, like the Bug Blender from a few years ago to be something that really captivates me. This thing, I feel like, would get lost in the shuffle, and therefore, nah, I could go without it. We're also getting a new snake. Now, this one does stick out to me. This is a lunging, striking snake. At least I think it's a snake. It looks like a snake, but it also looks like a zombie snake. So make of that what you will. I like the box that it comes in. It's kind of like this danger uh, warning crate that the snake's kind of popping out of. And I appreciate the way it looks. I think it's a neat idea. And if you're in the market for it, you're going to go for it. I don't know what I would do with it, per se, for the theming that I'll be doing this year. But uh, for a like a, something you could put in your kitchen, in your living room, what have you, I think it's a fine option. So we're starting to work up here to what I think are the really exciting bigger releases. I'll get one more small one out of the way. It's kind of in the middle here. It's this hanging demon creature. I feel like they're going to have way more hanging monsters than this one that got leaked. I wouldn't be surprised if there are more images floating around that I just didn't get my claws on them. This is a fine decoration. Nothing to write home about. It's it's just a hanging monster. They make probably 50 of them a year. But, again, this one is a little more unique, unlike the masses of pumpkin and zombie ones that you'd see at most retailers. Alright, now we're starting to get into some of the bigger stuff. First up are these two trick-or-treaters. I think, someone will correct me, I think they come as the pair. I could be wrong because we've seen individual trick-or-treaters by themselves, but this looks like it's a combo pack of a skeleton kid and a ghost kid. I wish they looked like kids wearing costumes. I think it would make more sense that way. But as it stands, they're fine. They're a little too cutesy for me. I wish they looked a little more sinister or even creepy in some regard, like the kids from the movie Trick or Treat. But they're not bad. I think they'll have their market for sure. And they're fun. I'm definitely interested to see what they do and how they interact. The next and probably one of my favorite things from this lineup, just because of uh, its sheer originality, is this raccoon that jumps out of a trash can. Now, I know it's probably going to have the same mech as Man's Possessed Friend from Spirit Halloween, but you can't really blame me for saying that this is a pretty interesting prop. The trash can itself is kind of this expanding fabric, it looks like, and the raccoon kind of pops through the midst of this garbage. How you would display it properly to get a good scare is up to you. The jump scare props like this have always run into the problem of being too short. And I wish that they would be elevated somehow, but it's hard to get a trash can on a table without it looking ridiculous. But I do love the originality here, and it has that kind of grimy sewer vibe that I always can get down with. Alright, now we're getting to the fun stuff. Up next, we have this trick-or-treater zombie kid, which, if you've even taken one glimpse at this image, looks strikingly similar to the limb-eating zombie boy from Spirit Halloween 2013, also made by Techie Design, so it's no surprise that they look similar. I actually really like the look of this guy. Uh, I love that he's got that bloody bag in his hand. I really do think that Techie is making a resurgence, and... As it's one of my favorite companies that makes Halloween items, it is a nice sight to see. I'm super excited to see this kid. I'm also curious to see the prices on these. I'd be curious to see how much this guy is going to go for. Up next, let's talk about the clowns. You know me with clowns, but I actually got to say, this big one, the one with a giant head, is pretty cool. 
It's got a really neat sculpt on the face. I like all the details on it and the wrinkles and all that stuff. The costume is also very classical to circus lore from the 1950s. So it's a fun sight to see. Clowns aren't my thing per se, but if you were a clown fan, this is one in the right direction. The stakeable clown, while I do like the look of it and the fact that it's holding an ice cream cone that has a skull in it, I don't entirely get why it's on a stake. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. If it was an ice cream guy giving out ice cream and was a full standing bodied prop, I would have a higher praise for this clown. Unfortunately, the stake kind of ruins it for me, but I can see why some people might like it because of the way it looks. And I guess wrapping out the clown section, if you want to count it, is this really cool popcorn clown, which is basically a popcorn booth and the popcorn actually itself lifts, lifts up and reveals this ghoulish looking clown. Now, the design of the clown isn't my favorite. I think it looks a little cartoony. I'll give it it's a clown, so that's okay. But I wish it was a little more sinister. But that being said, it still looks fine. And the whole facade of the popcorn machine is really cool. As a movie lover, and a guy that works at a theater, I love popcorn, and so this is a really clever design that I hope gets reused for other monsters, because, let's face it, this kind of design is rare, and I think it'd be a nice sight to behold. That's all the clown stuff. Let's wrap out this video with some of the neatest things from the Party City lineup. Up first is going to be this demon, and I know what you're thinking. Want former, you're into a demon prop? Well, I actually think it looks pretty darn cool for a giant demon. Will I get it? Mm, no, but I do think it has a really neat design. I really like the paint on it, the red really pops. The only thing that's odd to me, while it's an interesting choice, I must admit, is that the fog comes out of the horns. Why is this? I don't know. Perhaps it's something unique as opposed to just having fog come out of its mouth or out of its hands or out of its cloak, but it kind of looks goofy to me when fog is shooting out of its horns, if you feel me. Still a really neat animatronic. Up next, this one is great. This is a chained, possessed woman, is as I'm taking it. Now, there's actually a video of this one floating around on the internet because there was a prototype of this a few years back that was supposed to be at Spirit Halloween, but now, I think this is Techie, Techie moved it over to Party City, and they changed the design slightly. Basically, it's this woman that's sitting down, she levitates, there are chains attached to her arms, and she violently shakes. I really like the idea, and the execution is really creepy. I love that her hair is draped over her face so you can't even see it. That is pretty sinister. And finally, maybe the coolest thing besides the creep to me is something we haven't seen in quite some time. An asylum prop. This thing is a woman in a straitjacket with some kind of box on her head. I don't really know the purpose of it. At first, I thought this was a picture of someone undergoing like water torture, maybe? Or it kind of looks like that bucket from, I think it's Saw 4 or 5. But at any rate, it's a really cool looking decoration. I'm really curious about the video. Perhaps it thrashes around like Electrified Maniac. Either way, I'm really interested to see it. We haven't had like a straight jacket asylum prop in a long, long time. So it's a sight for sore eyes. That's all the Party City stuff I got for you. You'll have to wait until hopefully August when Halloween City and Party City stores start stocking this stuff up. The Creep is a must have for me, but there are a lot of decorations in this lineup that honestly I'm really impressed by. So let me know your opinions in the comments down below. And remember, for all things Halloween, this is Hauntformer.